Yeah. Got a really exciting story here that I've been seeing popping up and I can't wait to get to it. Good. For the bolt hole. bolt hole? It involves... No, it involves cylindric meat. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Yep. You love cylindric meat. That's I know, good. and I'm so excited. It's uh, mm-hmm. it's the greatest breakthrough in research that, in the 21st century. It That's really good. is. <clears throat> uh, okay. What's up, everybody? Uh, we're perfect. there in the chat. We can see people in the chat. Uh, okay, I didn't double check to make sure the live feed uh, report was over, but I got to think they're not doing an hour 20 on the live feeds, right? I mean, we never know. We'll have, we'll have we'll have our big brother <clears throat> updates at the end of this thing, anyways. So it's like, <laughs> yeah. So what happens if they're live and you also go live? We don't know. I don't know. Hope Do you think like, that? Well, I think parallel the splits. Down. Yeah, <laughs> so I get sent to a parallel universe <laughs> movie. Finish it. Okay. It's yeah, like it's opening. Different. It's like opening your Facebook account on four different devices at the same time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then or like, uh, which is like kind of what I am normally doing. All right, mm-hmm. all right. So you ready? Ready to talk some news AF? Yeah, I let think me so. Record. Oh, I just uh, pushed the I button. I haven't record yet. I haven't yet. That's okay. do it now. Now right, do it, and I'm doing it now. Did it? Okay, here we go. Hey everybody, what's going on? Rob Sesternino back again to talk with you about the week's most interesting news stories here for the week of August 24th, 2021 here on News AF. If a story is buzzing like it's on crystal meth, it's about to be News AF. If the same old news makes you bored to death, it's time for some News AF. Actual, factual news. Yeah, that's right. News AF back again here on Tuesday with the guys who check out all of the Internet's most interesting news and filter it, make sure there's nothing that's boring, kick mm-hmm. that out. And, then we and that it's probably true. Probably true, yeah. We're going to look it up, check all the facts. We have a research staff of thousands and bring it all to you here on News AF. First, let me bring in a man who is Pickleball's top influencer, a member of the cast of 14 of the top survivor seasons of all time. Mm -hmm. I mean, four of the 14. Four of the 14. Uh, It's Tyson Apostle. Tyson, how are you? I'm great. I'm happy to be here. And uh, I'm excited uh, to talk news every week. And I've got a new microphone, so this one shouldn't zonk out on me when I accidentally touch it here. And uh, um, it's pretty. It's See how it's all murdered out? Mm-hmm. Full black, where I used to have the old one, like what Danny's got see. over there. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, just... yeah, hide your mic, Danny. And uh, yeah, shame. Uh, let's see. One week from yesterday. So next Monday, I'm going to be in Gilbert, Arizona, playing pickleball at Gilbert Regional Park in the evening. Yeah. Uh, and anyone who was in the area who wants to stop by and get pictures and say hi or maybe get some free uh, Fila gear or whatever, I'll be over there. So uh, come say hi. And uh, if you need more info, download the Pickle Play app. It's free. And every download helps me a little bit in that uh, the more downloads, the better. Now, what kind of gear are we talking? Uh, I have some uh, Fila hats. Yeah. Not this exact one, but similar Fila pickleball hats. I have some wristbands. Mm. Uh, are they sweatbands or wristbands? Sweatbands. Good. Terry cloth sweatbands. Ooh, perfect. Uh, and pro wristbands and anti sweatbands, Danny. Say that again. Are you, do you prefer uh, wristbands over sweatbands? No, you need sweatbands. If I wear gloves, I sweat so much that I can't have it flying off of me like a sprinkler system. So I, I have to wear these. I wear mountain biking gloves when I run. I could wear the sweatbands, though, the terry cloth, uh, wristband, sweatband yeah. things. Those would help. So you your hands get so sweaty that the sweat- Not my hands. Everything. Think about it like shoulders, arms, armpit. It all drains out the pinky. And, and you have to wear... Gloves, because you would be shooting liquid everywhere. <laughs> if you yeah, when you say it like that, it sounds gross, Rob. But yeah, that's yes. very courteous, though. You're like a evil, uh, villain of like that. You're like a superpower. My superpower is spreading my liquid everywhere. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So I could use probably two or three armbands, and then 
maybe it'd be really cool if you could fill one up with sweat and squeeze it back in your mouth and get all those electrolytes back. It'd be you can. recycle, reuse, et cetera. You can, but you wouldn't want to unless you're talking like a Dune style yeah. uh, apparatus where it filters everything out and just gives you like uh, the most perfect hydration. Speaking of Dune, Did I've we heard already so introduced much... Danny. No, Danny Bryson for Spiron. This is Danny yeah. Bryson. Here to talk about Dune and how I've heard about the release now for so long, I no longer care mm -hmm. about Dune. Yeah. And same with Bond. You know what? I've heard about Bond and it, they've talked about the release so many times. I no longer care about James Bond's most recent movie. There's a new Wait, there's a new James Bond movie? Yeah, the one that they've been teasing for a year and a half now. Is it Pierce Brosnan again? Release. No, it's got Daniel Craig, his last stint as Bond. Burn. Mm. Anyway, yeah, who cares, right? It's been going on. It's been teased now for a year and a half. It's like we've all moved on. At least I have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll still watch and it probably on a plane. This is what's crazy is that Danny is also Daniel Craig Bryson, and he oh, does not even yeah. support his uh, namesake. Mm -hmm. No. Is he the he worst he, Bond, Danny? What's that? Is he the worst Bond? No, he's not the worst Bond. Is he the worst Bond. Daniel Craig? No, he represents uh, did the name very well. Good movie <laughs> okay. selections. <laughs> Great, he's a great actor. He's made a lot of money that he just recently said he won't be giving to any of his kids. Uh, he said he's gonna get rid of it all. I don't know. How it many seems kids does he have? It's like uh, if you're a rich person and you want to signal that you're cool and hip and not a capitalist freak. Yeah. You're like I'm not gonna allow this to continue. I'm going to give away all my money. And then you come to find out, just like we did with the Gates when they said they weren't going to give their kids any money. Oh, they were only going to give them like houses and like a hundred million dollars or something like that. Yeah. It's like, uh, yeah. Don't sit there and tell us you're not giving your kids anything. You're just not giving them everything. Mm -hmm. There's and, a lot in between those two statements. And to be honest, the only reason you work so hard is for your kids. Like, yeah. If, like what, who else am I going to give it to? I'd like yeah. maybe to spend it all on myself, but I'd also like to make it so my kids could have some fun. I mean, I'm not working extra for myself ever. I'm never working extra for myself. I'm doing the yeah. minimum to get by. You're not out there on the pickleball grind. Because I have enough friends that if I was just <laughs> by myself, I could still get helicopter rides. I could still <laughs> uh, ride in nice cars. I could still mm. stay at fancy hotels. All of that is not a problem. But uh, I need to build an empire for my children. Mm -hmm. The way the way you should live is if you do have wealthy parents, you mm -hmm. should hope for something but expect nothing. Mm -hmm. You know, live your life like you won't get it any uh, anything. Philosophy. But then when it does show up, if it does show up, you're really? so stoked. I yeah. don't. Is that how you've been living your life? Damn. Kinda. If they were to tell me that that uh, that I wasn't going to receive anything, I think that now what in my life, do? in my twenties, that's what, I could fly helicopters. I could do video work. Oh yeah. I, mean, I don't, okay. I'm not worried about working, uh, yeah. but, uh, maybe in my twenties, I would have been, I would have freaked out and blown blood vessels in my head, but now it's like, whatever. Okay. Now, what do you think about, I saw a couple of weeks ago that Quentin Tarantino said that he won't give any money yeah. to his mom. And people seem like they like that. Like, wow. He's because his mom doubted him. And yeah. actually that goes to another comedian. A comedian had a bit about how his mom doubted him. And I hate doubters. So yeah. I kind of supported Tarantino on that because people who tell you, you can't do this, you shouldn't do that. It, those people are the worst. You don't need those people around. I had a gym teacher in junior high who sat the entire class down and told them that the chances of any of us being professional athletes was so astronomically low that none of us should even try to be. And I was see, like, that's crazy. The, you're it, a PE that, teacher, and it's a it was a gym <laughs> teacher in junior high. <laughs> that's one way to motivate a bunch of kids. The thing is, <laughs> maybe the pressure is off, Tyson. Maybe it's like, uh, listen, none of you are going to be pros. Let's just have fun. Uh, it doesn't sound like that was his message. It doesn't. I don't remember fully the message other than that. And I just remember mm -hmm. even in that moment like that. thinking it's, like, this is uh, pretty negative. Mm -hmm. But Rob, I, I, I do kind of believe in that message. I don't know if I'd say that to my kids. I did watch a little league game that one of my boys was in and a parent was freaking out mm -hmm. about uh, the umping and the umping's done by like 14 year olds. And I wanted to go up and say, dude, none of this matters. 
This is, you know, like these are a bunch of eight year olds yeah, playing baseball. And he yeah. was freaking out. Like it was, he, he probably had a scout there for his son. You know what I mean? He was just freaking out. And I just would have said what you said. Let's just have fun. None of these kids <laughs> from what I could tell are going any further than little league. Yeah. I have that conversation or used to have that conversation when I was racing, uh, after racing pro racing amateur, you'd be like out just like mountain biking and I'm out there having fun. And somebody's like, I'm like trying to have a little chit chat with him on the trail. And they're like, excuse me, sorry. No, I can't <laughs> talk right now. I'm having a real bad day. And I was like, Oh, are you? Cause you're out here mountain biking. You must be getting paid and failing miserably because I'm not getting paid. So I'm just out here getting my exercise in that made him a little more upset. And actually Rob, that message that you shared, that's the message for the parents. The message for the kids is you can do anything. Go for it. The message for the parents is calm the F down. Your kid's not going to be a pro. Mm -hmm. I think that's probably the way to, to, to split that up. Now, I, I just want to like put a flagpole in the ground right now and say, yeah. I don't want to bring that energy into the podcast where it's like, Hey, like we're just having fun. If we screw up, it doesn't matter. No, that oh, no. be pro here. That's not this matters. Mean. Yeah. This is the most important thing I do every week. Uh, a uh, standing, well, any, this, this is the most important standing appointment I've had Agreed. over the course of the yeah. last five we years. Informed. We have a yeah. job to do. We, we can't just mess around. Yeah. No, nope. I think we're just over here. Willy nilly. And I'm it. not here for no. fun. No. Yeah. Me neither. <laughs> we were doing, doing something fun. We mountain bike. Yeah. <laughs> and I wouldn't be so concerned or excited about this new microphone. Yeah. yeah. With a USB C. Exactly, dude. On both ends, bro. Yeah. So you now I don't have to use the adapter. Uh yeah. Uh USB uh C. Cord. Cord. It's a, Cord. It has a that's where it, it that's how you know that it needs a wire. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't even know what USB stands for or what the C stands for on that. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's just an A, B, and C, and this is the USB C. Mm -hmm. so uh should we start talking about the news or should we talk about rob's road trip we can talk about my road trip you went yeah. up uh up north right yeah drove from north carolina to long island and, and is that the atlantic highway number two hmm. atlantic coast highway two i don't know i, didn't I don't know, know how they i, I assume I the pacific know. coast highway is one and so probably the other coast would be the second highway so maybe it would be zero because i feel like they would make that one first would have been the they first, probably yeah. would have been the first yeah so did you go up the coast? Did you see the ocean a lot of times as you were driving up? And a lot. Uh, we cut across that there is a very long bridge in Virginia that I didn't even know about. I thought we we're going over like a little, like a uh, little bridge, like uh, you know, hop, skip, and a jump. And like, boy, eighteen dollar toll. This better be some bridge. And it was like <laughs> five miles of bridge. Was it worth it? Um, my wife was very scared. So what are you of scared that we're gonna drive off the side of the bridge? She said, look, it all, the bridge only needs to collapse once. Yeah. Yesterday I watched San Andreas, yeah. the movie starring The Rock, and yeah. it had like four or five bridge collapse scenes, which I wouldn't want my children to watch. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Wow. Uh, well, you know, I mean, that's how roller coasters are, too. You get yeah. on a roller coaster and everybody's like scared. I'm like, I'm not scared of roller coasters. They do make me sick, but I'm not scared of them because the people on before didn't die. So the chances of me dying are slim, but it does happen. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you would say that it was worth it because it was a super long bridge and you would definitely pay yeah, the $18 really to go across again. I, I mean, it wasn't that it was fun, but I think it saved us a lot of time. I think we would have had to drive all the way around like a bunch of states to get to where we had ultimately had to go. Wow. Very cool. I always cool. think it'd be cool. And we saw a video a while ago, uh, someone dr jumping one of those bridges that rises like this. And I always yeah. thought it'd be kind of exciting if they had options to go do little jumps in your car, like minimum speed, mm -hmm. 40 miles an hour. And you got to clear so like a liability, gap. liability involved. <laughs> I know this is, a, this is in a different universe, yeah, a parallel universe. No one cares about risk. It's like yeah. everything is risky. What if it was like six inches off the ground, Tyson, where they advertise it as go airborne in your car. I've seen regular cars from regular people jump regular things. And it's never like the movies, dude, ever. Oh no. No. It's never like the movies. It's going to land straight on its front bumper, drag across, rip the bumper off. Then as its rear end slams down on the ground, it's going to bend the entire chassis. And yeah. that car is going to be considered totaled. Yeah, yeah. but maybe it's like there are car requirements. What? 
you can claim that on your insurance. Jump in a car, yeah, but I think your insurance premiums go up. Uh, Rob, what are you doing in New York? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just podcasting <laughs> and then trying to make time for family and just uh -huh. just like uh like re re i mean the nice part about being here is that you know it's it's cozy it's like everybody is like in the, like very, very close quarters so you really get to just spend a lot of time in and in, in that like, uh, yeah move around like tight spaces and it's That's just nice it's, it's a lot of like fun. living on a sub yeah, and everybody and everybody's like on the same page on everything. So uh -huh. there's just like so much like peace and harmony and love. Yeah, and uh, you know I haven't been here in a minute, and I haven't been here with my family in two years, mm -hmm. and um, you know it's just so incredible, and it's uh, and it doesn't even feel any different when I'm here by myself or when I'm here with my whole family because it's just both are so great, and just I I, I can't stop raving about it. It sounds incredible. Uh, let me ask you this. Are you going to see a Mets game? Yes. Next, next Tuesday. So we might do at the, actually at this, at this time next Tuesday. So we probably have to push the, uh, news AF, uh, a day or, uh, forward or behind. And are you going to see the jets play? No. Are the jets playing currently? I thought I saw something. A preseason game. Yeah, yeah. They, the they won their first preseason yeah. game. Yeah. So yeah. this is what I'm saying, Rob. Uh, what if the jets won and the Mets won? Would that improve your week even more? Well, I mean, nobody really Sorry. cares about the last preseason game, so it does. It, I mean, the preseason really is like, hey, let's let's just have fun and not get hurt. It doesn't really. Okay. Matter. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Oh, our motto. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> That's my model. That's been my motto also for the last uh, probably six I mean, years at least. Let's have fun and don't get hurt. Yeah. They want the starters to look good, but it's like, you know, at, at the end of these games, it's like you don't even like the people that are playing for your team aren't even going to be on your team. So it's like uh, if you if you lose like, uh, you know, 30 to 19, nobody Doesn't cares. Matter. Yeah. OK, cool. Yeah. But uh, well, that's cool. Uh, then uh, we won't uh, really give much credence to the Jets preseason. No, no. no. Um, Is this when they try the hardest because they get the most wins, would you say? No, they actually I don't think they uh done uh that well in the preseason historically but it's it's a new era with our uh mormon savior uh <laughs> jesus <laughs> christ <laughs> yeah. zach yeah. wilson right yes, yes. are you excited our about guy. him that's our guy he's look good he's look good but uh, let's not do too much uh, nfl talk today okay uh, yeah that'll bring us all down uh let's get into the news <laughs> yeah all right uh well we've talked about uh a whole bunch of things that our old buddy uh, Elon Musk has been up to over at Tesla, mm -hmm. and they've recently unveiled the Tesla bot, and it is uh, horrifying. I Good. wouldn't worry too much about it, Rob. Yeah, why not? That that robot that they show and that you know that they've had created and rendered. That's Wait, not can the you? robot you're gonna get. Can you describe it to us? What we're, what are people seeing when they're seeing this robot? What's happening? What's going on? I haven't seen well, it. Danny described the Tesla bot. Let me see if I could bring up a picture for you. The Tesla bot is as slick as a Tesla. I mean, it's got, it looks very humanoid. Is it? Oh, so it, it's not like the cyber truck of robots? No, no, it looks great. It looks, that that's the problem is it looks too good to be true, which in okay. a lot of Elon ideas, they're too good to be true. He just likes coming up with ideas, yeah, throwing them out there, and then hopefully someone oh. else will make it happen. It's just fully a rendering. Yeah, exactly. That's not, and, and the reason I, I watched something else before this came out in the news, and I had watched that Boston Dyna Dynamics parkour robot mm -hmm. video yeah but then i went back and i watched they also released a making of the robot parkour video yeah and okay. if you watch that video you realize how clunky robots are so those yeah. parkour robots are highly advanced robots probably some of the most advanced by bipedal robots and, out there and the but videos they, you're seeing are the best cuts of the best the cuts because in the raw in the raw edit they are smashing they're missing their mark they're <laughs> one time they jump and like fluid starts squirting out in all directions <laughs> and so you have these robots sounds like have, danny that sounds like a danny on, move yeah by some of the best teams 
in the robotic world have been working on these parkour robots and they're big, they're clunky. They have all sorts of problems. They're making progress. And then you have Elon come out and like, look at this thing that's straight out of like a sci-fi movie, super mm -hmm. sleek. There's no discussion as far as how it's going to run. What kind mm -hmm. of, you know, wh what about the battery pack? You notice that on the Boston dynamic robots, the battery pack and the fan, you can hear the fan running, takes up a huge part of these robots. So what, what Elon's done is what Elon does so well. And he, he has a, an idea of fantasy like the hyperloop or yeah. the tunnels. And he's throwing it out there as it could be in like 30 years, because that's how far away or maybe more the technology is. But anyone who pays attention to what people who really are working on robots are doing, which is Boston dynamics, that's where the current state Mm -hmm. of bipedal robots is not this thing that elon's trying to sell people I, I seriously when is that going to come out what's the date for that and it's just it looks great and it's shiny and it's awesome and i'd love to have a robot like that and as you know elon always talks about the dangers of ai and here he is pushing out robots on everybody which tells you a lot about what he really thinks about the danger of ai yeah well Danny, the <laughs> prototype is scheduled for next year for the Tesla bot. Right. The prototype will look nothing like that rendering. Mm -hmm. And How if much it does, does it it'll be order. It's just a prototype. You can't, I bet they aren't even doing pre orders. They're probably pre orders right now. No, they uh, yeah, they took pre orders for that truck, which just a month ago he said, yeah, we still can't release the truck because it would cost a million dollars a truck. And the and, Model 3. And the Model 3. I mean, the Model 3 took almost two years, which was uh, like over a year longer than what they said it was going to be. So I'm assuming they should take pre-orders for this stupid robot right now. I mean, sorry, robots. Never mind. I love you, robot. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, that's the Tesla way, isn't it? To put everything yeah. up for pre-order for $100 and get uh, 20 million people ordering it. And he markets this as the robot that will eliminate boring oh, tasks yeah right yeah and there's a so lot then what will i do all day boring tasks. Yeah. <laughs> he's gonna mow the lawn he's gonna kill scorpions uh in your house mm -hmm. i mean he he's promising a lot with this robot but really just it's not not gonna happen for a long time and you know what the great thing about elon is he gets people working on ideas because they say oh my gosh elon is doing this this like the hyperloop Let's all catch up yeah, yeah, you, you well, see well, actual well, people well, doing work on the Hyperloop, doing great work, but it's not Elon. But he had he started the motivation. Same with space, SpaceX. You know, you now you have Richard Branson and so you Bezos got Jeff, chasing you got him. Bezos in his backyard making robots now. Yeah, probably. And that's the great thing that Elon does is that he forces everybody to kind of be like, oh my gosh, this is something we should be doing. He does two things. He manipulates the market and crypto market yeah. and he motivates people in. Well, he manipulates. That's what it is. It's manipulation. And that, you know what? It's great because we benefit from it. If he's going to create a robot that will listen to my wife talk about uh, the things oh, happening in the family. <laughs> that's the that's... task that you're going to have your robot do. <laughs> <laughs> well, then that's awesome. That's great. It's going to, he says it's going to take up all our boring jobs. I know. Okay. So you get the robot, but you can only assign it to one task. Danny. One task. Yeah. I don't know. I might be doing the dishes. Oh, I have two. You, you can't, have you can't have two. Down. You have to pick. What's it going to be? So I live on the third floor in my apartment and sometimes we come home from the grocery store and it's just so many trips up and down the steps. Uh -huh. to, That's I mean, a good one for a robot. Robot would be good. And then also the garbage is on the other side of the facility. Oh. So I walk across the whole thing with these garbage bags. And I'm always afraid they're going to break. But I mean, if the robot could go and take the garbage to the garbage bags and then maybe just swing by the car. Maybe on the way back up. Is that two tasks? I'll allow hmm. it. He could probably just hold the garbage bag in front of his mouth and shoot fire and incinerate it. So mm -hmm. that task is done. And then he just grabs the groceries, all of them, like me when I was a teenager. And my mom would have his mouth and then spits meals out his butt. No, no. Holds all the bags at once and leaps to the third floor. Okay. Mm, like that, that awesome. movie AI. Uh, of course. Tyson, one task. Yeah, it's, the a, it's a robot chauffeur. 
Mm. No. I mean, you could have the car just do that, but I prefer to. And uh, yeah, because, and it can, yeah, it does all my driving for me. So when, uh, when Rachel's family needs a ride to the airport and you're like, how long are you going? And they're like, just overnight. It's like, here's $12, just park at the airport. Why do I need to drive you and then come back tomorrow to pick you up? That doesn't make any sense to me. And, uh, so my robot will be able to do all of those tasks rather than me get into the logistics of why someone should drive themselves versus why someone should get a ride versus why someone should take an Uber. And I'll break it down for you. You should drive yourself and park your car if it's going to be cho- cheaper than an Uber there and back, which for us is $60. So as long okay. as you're paying less than $60, so it means you're probably there for four or five days, park yourself there. And then because it takes a half hour to get there and a half hour back, that's an hour of somebody's time. It, once it's worth, once you're saving more than an hour of everybody's time that has to be involved to get you to them from the airport, or you're going to be there for a long term. That's when you ask somebody for a ride. Rides according to Tyson. And the best part is the robot does not give you back sass. Yeah. Tell it what you want. Well, check out this slide that they showed uh, when they presented this robot that the Tesla bot is uh, 5'8", weighs 125 pounds, can lift 150. That's nothing for Danny. Yep. And those meaty quads. Yeah. Uh, and it says here, world built by humans for humans. And then they add in here, friendly. friendly. <laughs> That's an important bullet point. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I would but like who's programming the friendliness. Cause it, I feel like if right. Elon, I think Elon Musk is too far removed from knowing what a real human interaction is without someone kissing your butt to really fully understand like true friendship. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure they have a team called the friendly team, which researches friendliness around the Uh globe and creates (laughs) uh, an average (laughs) friendliness that they can then program it to be. But that's a good question. Like how friendly is friendly? My friends give me a hard time when I do stupid stuff. Will the robot do the same? You're right, Danny, because I feel like if it was like fake friendly, it would be it would come across it'd be patronizing. It would, yeah, it would be patronizing. Yeah. But it was yeah. like, uh, hey Danny, uh, you gain weight, <laughs> you idiot. <laughs> Keep up, fatty. Stuff right. like that. Yeah, like, which it should. That's, yeah. That's that's what friends do. They're kind of mean. See, that's high level friend. That's friendly. so high level. Cause yeah. like here, like here we can us three, we're sitting here and yeah, I like to tease Danny quite a bit. I've given him some nicknames over the year. Hi. And to my knowledge, we just laugh about it. I don't know how Danny feels internally about it, but I'm hoping he's not fully so hurt. Upset. Well, but and the does. robot would be like, you truly are vascular. Yeah. Your vein system is extensive and visible. <laughs> <laughs> so you think it takes a more scientific approach to the friendliness? Yeah, it would be literal. It would be so literal. It would. It would be great. Terms to then, like, kind of like, uh, like, uh, break your, you know what, like, uh, hey, Danny, looks like that you are at one hundred and ten percent water retention today. (laughs) (laughs) Well, the other thing it could do is it could also probably be like, like, let's say that Danny wasn't vascular, and it was like, Danny. Why do they call you vascular D? Oh, I get it because you are not. Ha, 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 ha. I understand human sarcasm now. Learning. <laughs> if it talks like that. It's if they, like that. I would love it if they made it talk like that. Made it <laughs> so robotic, like the joke robotic. Yeah. I think that would be a great touch. And they've known to do stuff like that like, with their cars. Like so, the robotic made in, on the Jetsons. Yeah, exactly. Like Thingbot at that point. Yeah. I, I think that would be a great touch. That would be a great way in making it friendly. Is giving mm-hmm. you that ridiculous robot voice that Tyson yeah. just did. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. Let's talk about a little bit of maybe a sadder story. Uh oh. Uh, so some new research suggests that uh, there may be a price, a, a cost to eating one of America's most beloved foods. Uh, that would be the hot dog, the Frankfurter. 
I saw Everywhere. this all over. All over. People Every were nobody wants to talk about this. Yeah. Every hot dog you eat takes 35 minutes off your life. Uh all I could think about was the Nathan hot dog eating. Yeah, he should have been dead, dead before dead he was tomorrow. born. Yeah. He that what is that? 50 hot dogs they they eat? No, like 80. So let's say it is 80. I don't know if it's that high, but let's say it's 80. Yeah. What it ties to do the math for me. I, I failed math. Joey I Chestnut. Math. I mean, Joey Chestnut should have died before he was born. <laughs> it's like it's like a Terminator. Your future self ate your past <laughs> self to death. <laughs> in, in some weird way, you were never born because you yeah. ate so many hot yeah. dogs. You yeah. went negative. I think, though, <laughs> Danny, if you quit smoking, it does negate that 35 minutes. But... Yeah. <laughs> the, so basically, the hardest man on earth or woman is smoking well, and eating hot dogs endlessly. Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> in fairness, hot dogs are one of the biggest choking hazards. So sometimes they take more than 35 minutes off. Sometimes, well, that's maybe <laughs> they the way they've years. worked into the average. Because yeah. they're like, on oh, the yeah, average, yeah. it only takes, when you eat a hot dog properly, yeah, it you, only really takes a minute or two off. But, yeah. but the you fact that somebody don't. dies instantly from eating a hot dog brings that average way up. Mm hmm. Now, do other foods you eat give you time back? For instance, if I ate an apple, am I getting back two minutes? What you're talking about is food-based time travel or... <laughs> <long> uh, <laughs> <laughs> so what? So let's say, let's say, Rob, you want to have a hot dog. Okay, you eat a hot dog, but now you have to have 12 apples to negate the hot dog. And that's yeah. what your meal ends up being. Yeah. Come I was on, thinking dude. this way. Let's say you tra wanted to travel back in time 100 years. You had to eat over 10,000 hot dogs <laughs> no. in one city to go back in time. I think 10,000 uh, oh, because it would take years off your life. Uh, well, I yeah, just, it just because it can't kill you, it just transports you back in time. It's just I'm working on a book idea right now <laughs> based on food time travel. And like if you ate enough fruits or vegetables to gain time, you could launch yourself into the future. I don't think you launch yourself into the future. You just live longer. Now, this is my this is my fantasy, Tyson. Yeah, I think you'd have to eat ten thousand apples to go into the past. Oh, um, no, not in the way this it's working in my head. Yeah, I'm sorry. Either join me in my fantasy or don't give me any input. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> and uh, this is the Danny Show. I'm gonna go get some coffee. Uh, I really feel yeah. like a hot dog right now. I do. I want a hot dog too, and it's even only breakfast. And uh, I mean, I mean, you could do the breakfast hot dog where it's the egg and hot hot dog slice scramble, which was the only meal my dad knew how to prepare when I was a child growing up. So if my mom was gone in the mornings for whatever reason, my dad would be like, "Here's what you're having: scrambled eggs and sliced hot dogs." I wish I could see what 35 minutes are being removed. That would be nice from the back end. Yeah, I think it's just you well, die I know that. 35 minutes. I, I know, but like, what if I could eat it to a point like to exactly the, the point where you've lost your health and your like something mentality. bad is about to happen, or yeah. you know, my kid's gonna turn out to to be crazy, you know, worthless and just always hitting on me for money and living in my basement. Uh -huh. At what point is it? Yeah, worth I could it? just so like then... eat hot dogs while watching my life in the future, and they're like, okay, that's good. Yeah. So no what we need, dogs. so what we need is Tesla to, I'd still space out the hot dogs for enjoyment, but, uh, what you do is you have Tesla invent a thing that shows you when your quality of life is diminished to a point that is no longer acceptable to you. And that's how many hot dogs each oh, person need, should eat. I just thought about the thing I would want the Tesla robot, Tesla robot to do for me. What? Mm -hmm. Give me piggybacks, <laughs> like to through the grocery store. Just jump on his back. And, and, so do your walking for you. Yeah, do my walking for me. That's essentially what Rob like already wanted it to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, he wanted it to carry his groceries. I wanted to carry you. me. Okay, okay, that's fine. You Maybe in a baby that. Bjorn. You can have it do that, but also it has to be there uh, when you and Liz are intimate with each other. Whoa, that's fine. Standing yeah. in the corner, recording everything yeah. with its robot eyes, learning, <laughs> yeah. sending it to Elon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I bet Elon doesn't eat hot dogs. I bet you, if you, you know how like rich people always put out the list of things they do. Wake up at yeah. three thirty. I bet Elon eats the most hot dogs. You're saying he eats zero hot dogs. I bet he eats some every day.
And that's how he comes up with his ideas. Yeah. And that's also, I mean, he doesn't have time for real meals. So he's just like got a hot dog cart in his office with a hot dog robot there, just slinging hot dogs straight down his gullet as he chokes him down without even chewing. Yeah. Like a bird. No car. (laughs) Maybe it's the bun, Tyson. It could be. Yeah. No, they talk about the salt. I I think it's definitely the the sodium. That uh, salty. So you can negate that with uh, lots of running and sweating, right? Yeah, if that's the case, you're gonna live forever, Danny. Yeah, how sweaty you are. Just this morning when I fished my run, I had these like perfect lines of sweat. Yeah, I disgust myself. So such a baller. They didn't just look at hot dogs in uh, this study, uh, oh. where five thousand foods uh, were looked at in uh, in this new study uh, okay. that was done. And so, can they- I? Th- Yes? Can I stop you for a second? How was this study actually done? Has it been going over the course of a lifetime where they already have a group of people who have died 35 minutes earlier because of the hot dogs they ate? I mean, probably, right? So it's been going on for 100 sir, years. Sir, I'm dying. Let me see my family. <laughs> no, sir, before you're, I bring your family in, how, how many, many hot, hot dogs, dogs did you eat? <laughs> Just rough, rough estimation. Sir, sir, oh, we lost another one. Did he say? <laughs> no, he never said. Let yeah. his family in. So they studied uh, uh, a bunch of different foods, and uh-huh. uh, they found that one 85-gram serving of chicken wings uh, mm-hmm. led to 3.3 minutes of life lost. Again, I might argue it's worth it. And they said that the hot dog was going to give you 36, but uh, listen to this. Mm-hmm. Peanut butter and uh, jelly sandwiches were associated with an increase in... 33 minutes. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. So, so if you Can't eat each other out today, right after the hot dog, you're basically Negate breaking it. it. Yeah. So can you just put peanut butter and jelly on your hot dog? No, you see, those two foods don't mix. This was all pre-planned by God. He's like, if I'm going to take away, I'm not going to let them cancel this out. This has got to be a perfect plan. You can't eat a hot dog, then go to a peanut butter and jelly. What about the peanut butter and it's jelly not natural. first? Yeah. And then Danny, also listen to this, that they say foods like salted peanuts, baked salmon, and rice with beans were also associated with gains between 10 and 15 yeah. minutes. The salmon oh, industry. The problem. Yeah. Where the salted Big salmon. Is. Big salmon's got their fingers so deep oh, into these I, nutritionists. Peanuts are good for your heart, I think. but And I love salted peanuts, the dude, in the shell. Peanut died famously. He sure did. did. I'm looking at this list of all the bad things, and it's basically what I eat every day. Yeah, sugar it's basically rings, basically, hot yeah. dogs, burgers, breakfast. So if this were true at all, Danny would have died before I even met him 20 years ago. Yeah, I would have died with I, I'd have the lifespan of like someone in the Middle Ages. Mm. Well, I like true. this study, and then I don't like this study, which is uh, I'd like the PB and J. That's great news. Are you a yeah. PB and J eater? I do like PB and J's. Yes, how often do you eat them? Uh, I take them on my runs quite often, actually. So if you ate a PB and J every day, or you ate a few of them every day, you would essentially live forever. Sounds like it. PB and J keeps the doctor away. I mean, at, at a certain point, you'd have to eat one within every thirty-three minutes. Once you get to a certain age, what if you knew what, you were close? Point, yeah, that's what I'm saying. At what point are you, is it worth eating a PB and J every thirty-two minutes just to make sure that you get that extra thirty-three minutes of life every time? What if, though, you were close to the end? This is a great mm-hmm. idea. And let's say you know it's the last days of your life and one of your other friends died. Tyson dies. I'm like, great. I'm going to have to go to another funeral. Boom. Five hot dogs, maybe 100 hot dogs. End it right then and there. Plus, the insurance payoff, payoff is probably still going to come out. So mm-hmm. I don't have to go to a funeral, yeah. Tyson's. And uh, I got to end my life in a orgy of hot dog delight. <laughs> but wouldn't you rather just like catch me right before I die and jam a peanut butter and jelly sandwich in my mouth? <laughs> this, this will buy you another 30. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, Tyson's like, oh, I'm ready to go. I'm like, no, you're not. Yeah. Cram a PBJ, <laughs> hold his nose and mouth. You will swallow this. I don't want to be here. I've been so much pain. Eat this PB and J. Probably has to chew it for me and spit it in my just, mouth. I have to help you masticate it by moving your mouth up and down. Well, I think we figured out how to uh, 
beat, beat death. <laughs> Father time. <laughs> Who knew it was as simple as hot dogs and uh, TV and is garbage. It doesn't yeah. take into account exercise, sleep, genetics, reduction in stress, genetics. Uh, and How now it? it's obviously like big peanut butter paid a bunch for this study <laughs> and salmon. Yeah. And it's just like the salmon and who knew the salmon and peanut industry was in bed to, with each other. Well, Tyson, they took all those hits from the peanut allergies that uh, basically That's right. this was it's true. This was a do or die moment for them. Tyson tried to bring it back. Think about how much peanut butter Tyson ate on Survivor this past year. Tyson's oh. going to live a, easily another 10 years. Yeah, over 100 for sure now. Yeah, but the cost one fire token, I think that that was worth it. <laughs> yeah, one fire token for to live over 100 years old portable. now. Yeah, yeah. It's awesome. So. Or I now have uh, up to 700 hot dogs I can eat and still die and live an average life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at any point. Get started on those. Capsule. Yeah. 12 pack so, of hot dogs. Okay. That's cool. All right. Well, um, have either of you checked out the uh, viral milk crate challenge? Mm. I came across this before Are millennials knowing hurting the challenge. Yeah, people of all ages. Yeah, I, I watched it happen several times. First of all, I thought watching one of well, the very first one I saw, I thought, oh, this is interesting. It was just a neighborhood got together. I don't know where people are getting these crates from. But at first I thought oh, that would be easy. That would be really easy to do. But then... By the time they get to, depending on how many they stack, by the time they get to the second or uh, second to highest or the highest oh, crate stack, yeah. it is it is impossible. Like I watch people stand, in, like try and balance it out for you know forever, and then they just put all their weight on it, and it's so bad. And they all hit their head. They hit all their hit heads head first, and they fall on the crates. Yeah, this is the really... risk taking that makes. Uh, America and humans in general. It's so awesome. And it's like completely internet, unnecessary. Dude. Yeah. And totally rad. It's like generally, and this is what's crazy is that we expect this from the Russians. Like you can get online and find <laughs> Russian videos of guys getting hurt all day long, but then this is great. I do love it. And, uh, is it for a cause or it's oh. just, that makes it even better. If you could bottle up the American spirit oh in one, in one theme, the milk crate challenge is that, that's yeah. America right there. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I I think uh, if you're going to do this, you need to have some friends standing by with some PB and J's. Just to <laughs> jam in your mouth. <laughs> get you get you through it, you know. Uh, He's hurt bad. I don't, <laughs> Ouch. I don't think I've watched one successful video. Do you have one queued up, Rob? I haven't seen one successful. And that's why it's the milk crate challenge, because you can't get that PP and J down without like crates of milk. <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> that's it's, true. it's not going down. <laughs> Man. So that's... as far as we know, no one has uh -huh. successfully done. Not yet. Not yet. Not me. Does it. Yeah. Yeah. Danny. Danny, you're a spry on your feet. You're a mountain goat. But I watched those. Sure, we will blow up once Danny completes the milk crate challenge. Yeah. Is but there... I have watched so many people fall that I don't, I mean, I know exactly how it's going to happen. You don't, you tumble onto your neck head area <laughs> with possibly a crate directly underneath you with its very sharp corners. Mm. I just don't, I mean, these people are brave beyond brave. <laughs> and it looks like some of them could easily have broken their wrists uh, died or, instantly. Yeah. or their ribs. And it's like, uh, I only need to see one of those videos to know I'm not trying that. Uh, is there, has someone created like a rule, like how many stacks? Do yeah. You like have how, to... how tall do you have to go in the middle? Uh, I'm seeing six or seven in the middle for some of these. Yeah. I, I feel like people get up to four pretty easy. Yeah. It's beyond four like, yeah, that yeah. you are now put, taking your life in your hands. Yeah. For a, and you know what? For a good cause, for glory, for vain glory, <laughs> yeah, it's for, totally worth for it. TikTok fame, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. No, I, I love it. I love I, I love watching it, and I want to keep watching it. It's like uh, the ice bucket challenge. Remember when guys were getting creative and like dropping full shovels, uh, uh like uh, on their head, and it, it looked super painful. But for me. It made me happy. And I think as long as they have enough PB and J's standing by, they're going to be fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, 
Uh, everybody is trying that on grass and uh, Devin in the chat is happy that that's happening, but also grass is an imperfect surface. If you had a more perfect surface oh, to yeah. set the crates on, would that make it easier to stand on them? Yes, it definitely would. I, have you ever tried playing Jenga on carpet? It doesn't work. Yeah, but the risk goes through the roof. So you have what to if have you the... put pads on the side. Okay. How many people have gymnastic pads? Oh, yeah, I guess a mattress right. would work. Danny, here's what we need. Get your friends over at Boston Dynamics to get one of their robots to do the milk crate challenge. When they've got that video ready to go, wake me up, okay? Then you'll know the challenge has jumped the shark. No, then I'll know that these Boston Dynamics robots are ready to go and they are legit. Yeah, and maybe jam us. I mean, we might need you. Yeah, you'd probably need some PB and J to get you that far in life, Rob, mm -hmm. to see a Boston Dynamics dog do this, yeah. but. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I love this challenge. I did see it going around a little bit and uh, didn't realize it was a full blown It was a challenge. That's thing. what I thought until I saw this article that Rob posted. Has anybody, I didn't know it was a challenge. Is that one of those challenges where you get on somewhere and are like, hey, the Danny here about to do the crate challenge and I challenge Barack Obama, Rihanna, <laughs> Oprah Winfrey, Beyonce, and, uh, Ellen. All the biggest people who would totally never and contact. Kanye. Yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine you challenged Barack Obama and then he did it and then got hurt and it would be like, uh, you're liable. The 44th president of the United States, Barack Obama, has been injured in the milk crate challenge. He was challenged by content creator Danny Bryson. Boy. But if this was a presidential election year, I would like to see my, pres my potential presidents doing this challenge. I feel like it would weed out some of the less desirables. Because we've had a lot of spry presidential candidates. The, we haven't. The, the, yeah. That's the thing is that we need. I've always been of the impression that we need spryer presidential candidates. We always elect these people that are like a hundred trillion years old and all of them are out of touch. Yeah. They're on a peanut butter, a straight peanut butter <laughs> <Yeah>. IV <laughs> rejuvenation every morning and every night. So why not get somebody that can do this challenge and at least give them a chance? Because a, if they're doing this challenge, they're in touch enough with what's going on yeah. in the world because they're on the internet seeing this. Mm -hmm. And so that already gives me hope. Okay. We'll see if they can incorporate some sort of like NFL scouting combine at the... Uh... <laughs> 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 so yeah, at the very end of this combine little course they run, they should have the crate challenge. Yard dash. So you're saying put the crate challenge on the actual NFL combine, but also yeah. run an NFL combine like competition or at the presidential, presidential candidates. candidates. Yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. I like it. I think yes, both. I'm in. All right. Um, a story that comes to us about some issues that are going on uh, over uh, around the Great Barrier Reef, where there's uh -oh. an issue where uh, the highly venomous olive sea snakes mm -hmm. have been mistaking scuba divers for their mates. Oh, go on. So they're fine. The scuba divers are fine. They're just impregnated. <laughs> yeah, well, they're saying that uh, the, uh, I guess, confused sea snakes are approaching divers uh, as potential mates. So when they rub up against the sea divers and the sea diver takes offense, just goes, what? I'm a snake. I'm a sea snake. Mm -hmm. That's who I am. I mean, yeah. how, well, they're how, highly what is venomous. it, what is it that's, that's the confusing problem. the snakes? Do they, they say, is it like the wetsuits? Suit. Yeah, maybe the wetsuit. Maybe. I mean, this isn't a podcast of speculation. We want facts here. So what what happens is uh, that they are looking for mates and, and uh, female sea snakes as soon as they uh, see them. And what they do is they go up to them. And I think the forward, uh, they flick the female uh, sea snake with its tongue to check for chemicals on her skin. Hmm. hmm. So are people getting bit by these snakes or just close encounters? Uh, cl close encounters uh, so far. Uh, although in uh, three cases, male sea snakes uh, coiled around a diver's fin, which is usually scary. only observed during courtship. Wow. That sounds scary. Anytime a snake coils around anything that is 
part yeah. of you. So That's bring scary. decoy fins. Well, I think yes. you let the snake do its thing. I think yeah. that, that if you are trying to... <laughs> to completion, and then once it's done, it probably gets tired, it falls asleep, away. and eats a PB&J. Yeah, yeah. Smokes a cigarette real quick, whatever mm -hmm. the underwater version of that is. <laughs> yeah. What they tell you is that having this giant snake hurdle towards you and start checking you out, it can be life-threatening even if the snake doesn't try to bite you because panic is deadly. What, yeah, especially uh, underwater. How big are these snakes? Can you give us, uh, or is there a video, or what can we see? How cold the water is. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Very good, Rob. Wait, wait a wiener joke right there <laughs> oh what wait what can you explain that Dan? <laughs> yeah what they tell you is that the, this uh sea snake the sea snake just thinks you're a female snake and once they, they figure it out they'll wander off and look for love elsewhere mm -hmm. that's Sounds very fine. presumptuous that they're looking for love yeah yeah that's true Maybe they're just looking for a good time mm -hmm. so that's well, what careful do your thing all of our yeah. divers out by the great barrier reef I mean, we're moving into their territory, so, right? Yeah. Snake love is what you should expect mm -hmm. in yeah. snake territory. Yeah. Oh, okay. I agree. It's, oh. uh, yeah. Danny, would what? you let an olive, <laughs> would you let an olive sea snake make love to you? To your fin? Oh. Knowing that it's venomous, it, mm -hmm. whether the, the lovemaking is secondary to the fact that there is a venomous snake right there, that I can't tolerate. Hmm. Have you never touched a venomous snake on the tail? Oh, I, I have no memory. I'd like to think that I have touched a rattlesnake. No, I've touched a rattlesnake. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, my When I was a kid, my neighbor caught one and grabbed it by the neck and we were when I was probably nine years old. Yeah. So we all got to uh, touch the rattles and stuff. But yeah, I don't like it. I wouldn't. Would you? What you're gonna let it just do its business at the whole time, knowing that it, if you disrupt its lovemaking, it could bite you. What are you I mean, do? is it worth? Is it worse to struggle and run away? Is that gonna aggravate it more? Like that's you're just trying to get out. Sexually of frustrated snakes are more dangerous. Like I don't know. I mean, like if you came up upon a grizzly bear. What are you supposed to do? That's Pray. like, and what do you do with the snake if the snake is upon you? Or is it, is it easier to just like pretend you're a tree in that moment? Be like, I'm a tree. <laughs> or are you supposed to fight? Like, I don't know. I know you're saying the sea snake equivalent of curl up in a ball, right? Yeah, we need to yeah. come up. We need to know what course of action we need to take in you know that's moments. a good point tyson we have all these rules of engagement for yeah. land mammals but mm -hmm. i don't think we have we a do lot. for sharks we have some what, for sharks. what's the shark when you punch you him got, in the nose yeah and you got to make eye contact with them maintain eye contact was uh, that real you got to yes. maintain eye contact with the their dead eyes yes and what somehow it like they know you're alpha. facing it. They know you're facing it so that they know that you're ready to fight back, I think is essentially. So maintain eye contact with them. Uh, you also don't want to be threatening because they're uh, territorial. So you kind of do need to back off. But I feel like that's giving sharks way too much credit. Do you think we need human to, emotions? Maybe we just need to wear less sexy fins. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Maybe we need to wear a very swarm fitting uh, diving suit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you're saying <laughs> like a baggy, like one of those sumo <laughs> suit style. You want people to be comfortable too. Yeah, that's true. So something baggier. Mm -hmm. That's not a bad idea too, because then if a shark bites you, it gives it a little bit of extra time to realize that you are not food before it gets to the fleshy parts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so that's good. That's almost like uh, basically like you want like one of those like um, when they're like training like a pit bull, you want like that suit. Yes. Like, yeah. Like, down on you. Because they always say the shark bites you that first time to see what you are. Yeah. And then they usually go away. So oh, make it taste disgusting like a warhead. <laughs> a war not everybody Dandy. thinks a warhead is disgusting. But yeah, yeah that's not they a bad idea. Yeah. I'm not saying I like warheads, but they wouldn't make so many if people didn't like them. Mm, they like the inside part. They're willing to go through hell to get to that interior. Yep. Makes it all worthwhile. Well, that, maybe the shark will look at it that way too. 
Yeah, yeah. Listen, you just have to get through this first part on those things that are swimming around. And I tell you, the middle is so good. So Tastes good. like hot dogs. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. No, that's what you do if there's a shark attack. You just have a 12 pack of hot dogs and chuck them away from you. <laughs> the shark will be uh, gone sooner than he thinks. Okay. Uh, and then I've got one more story before we go to Danny's bolt hole about how uh, apparently there is a hotel that will deliver uh, not room service like a normal hotel. A venomous uh, snake. No, they will bring you puppies to your room at the oh. Denver Kimpton Hotel Monaco. They have a puppies and Prosecco package, which is a uh, sparkling uh, white wine uh, that you book a suite mm -hmm. and to bring a bunch of puppies to your room live does news this, af does this uh does this service come with uh people who will come in and clean up all the puppies diarrhea <laughs> or will euthanize all the puppies once they're no longer needed i don't like this idea for that i don't like it either the puppy whole now puppy what do you thing. do yeah well it's the same with like uh, ordering a chick for easter or a little teeny baby bunny yeah. and then giving it back what do they do with those and are there homes for all of those puppies that they're bringing on to this like I, I get that it's marketable and that people love puppies and that, yeah, you get to lay around in puppies all day, but, <laughs> but uh, everybody's dream is a bed made of puppies. <laughs> <laughs> but the issue here is as those puppies mature and become less desirable to the people who were paying to have this puppy service, where are their homes now? Well, they go on to do yeah, they have homes before they're part of a uh, national puppy rescue. Ah, so true? Tyson, this is for a good cause, a puppy bed for a good cause. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I would mean, never as do long this. as they're not purposely generating new puppies for yeah, this service. Breeding puppies for this hotel's promotional weekend. Okay. <laughs> they don't have like a puppy farm. The okay. hotel in the back has got like this stinking I mean, puppy honestly, farm. honestly, if it was if it was an adopt a pet situation where they brought all the puppies in and then were like, if you're in love with one of these puppies, mm -hmm. you can take it home with you. That's that's smart right there. Let me see, Let me see if I can book the room for us. Uh, okay, three adults. Okay, the night is the night Are of they, uh, August twenty seventh. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Can we? I uh, get a deal with my Amex Platinum, so. <laughs> Because we'll get later checkout. We'll get a free hey, room let them upgrade. Let know that Tyson's we'll an influencer. Yeah. I bet we could get some influencer stuff. Do the influencer thing. Oh, He's we'd like to stay there for free. Dead. How much? How much is it? So the so if we get uh, two beds. Uh, that's a that's two queens. That's fine for us. Uh, yeah. Then uh, or we can get the suite. The suite is three eighty four again. But then the I think oh, that the that's, that's just the bad. room. This is the room. I think we have to pay five fifty for the puppies. That's fine. We can split that up. Uh, but uh, and here's the here's the cool thing about uh, Danny Rob is that he would rather sleep on the floor than sleep with another grown man in this in a queen bed because of the spatial issue so if you just bed of puppies what this is a bed of puppies I yeah think. danny will sleep on the bed of puppies rather than wrong risk touching a toe with you in a queen bed i also wouldn't want to touch a puppy i'd rather sleep in the car than be in a room that had a bunch of puppies so me it. and rob are in the room you guys are in there you take a puppy shower and then sleep on a puppy bed uh, no, the puppies are on the floor they can't get up on the bed unless you bring them on the bed yeah they all, they'll end up on the bed and then I'll be in the, Here, the no, van. No. <laughs> Michael Netters in the chat asks if Boston Dynamics does a similar thing with the puppy uh, robot dogs. I would do that. That makes sense. I could have the those puppies, the Boston Dynamic puppies, probably line up perfectly and become a bed themselves. That's a puppy bed I could get behind. Plus, they protect me. Mm -hmm. Sure. With their lasers and stuff. Apparently. Yeah, in this situation, they have lasers. But they're not snuggly. And they I don't, don't do cute, snuggles. funny things. I none of that matters to me. I'm a grown man. I so you wouldn't puppy protection. You wouldn't want to see like a little teeny cute little puppy do the milk crate challenge in your room. Why would I? That's just that's just reckless. I'm putting a puppy's life in danger, so no, I can get a little TikTok. Uh, no, a puppy wouldn't hurt themselves falling like that. Puppies falling are, off of a six stack crate. They're like the uh, they're like the toddlers of dogs. You know how bendy mm. they are, and have you ever seen your? Look, I might child not want a, a puppy 
will face yeah, plant scorpion and then get up and be like, what happened? And you're like, you just broke your back in 17 places is what I thought when I saw you fall. Like this, the, the ideal place for this idea is in the virtual world, not in the real world. Okay. Let's go create a virtual puppy room, uh, where you can put on the, Oh, which by the way, mm -hmm. we did not talk about Zuckerberg's new, uh, virtual meeting space. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> what, a, what a nightmare. That guy is just, he's on a roll for making him seem completely out of touch with the rest of humanity out of the bad ideas. What do you say? No, oh, have you not seen the the images of this bring, bring fake up the new Facebook uh, virtual reality meetings? You can have your own avatar, and it can look equally as weird as Mark Zuckerberg's does in the promo for this. Okay, because Mark Zuckerberg looks like he's like uh, somebody else's avatar for a human. Yeah, does he have? <laughs> does he have I am telling you, and I still does offer his avatar those. have sunscreen on him. Yeah, too much. I am offering my services, Mark. Let me be that barrier between you and the world, and I will sh I will shield the world from your bad ideas that make you appear not to be human. <laughs> yeah, okay. I mean, haven't most of his ideas been pretty bad? Yeah, he just can't get a win. Okay, yeah. so yeah, here is uh, from uh, this was widely reported. Uh, Facebook pushing for VR for remote work, so you can work from home. But in virtual reality, sit in a meeting with people. Tyson. Yeah. <laughs> you can go to the place in virtual reality that you're trying to avoid in real life. Mm -hmm. And you can choose a stupid avatar from like 2004 okay. uh, to represent you in that meeting. Mm -hmm. Because what could be cooler than going into virtual reality to sit at a conference room table? <laughs> It's such a bad idea. That was it's funny. got this when they thought it up. It's got potential if you could sit in really cool places and you could be, yeah. you know, awesome looking avatars. Like, Danny, if if you were gonna have a virtual meeting, like, uh, why why not have it at the top of Mount Everest? Like, why yeah. would you go in virtual reality to the most boring? I mean, no, or the fantasy. At, look, at, look at where that conference room is, though, dude. It's up high. It's at a ski resort. Yeah, but you could do a conference room made of puppies. Or underwater, where all the mating balls are happening. There's so many options better than the one they used yeah. in the promo that it almost, it, it really did I, blow my mind that that's what they would choose when saying you could be in a virtual space. Mm -hmm. You know, it, the virtual point of virtual space is to be somewhere awesome that you could never be in real life, I, not in a in a conference room. Like the virtual reality conference room, I feel like is the place like in a Black Mirror episode <laughs> of a crime and they put your soul in. Like, all right, you'll stay in this virtual reality exactly for uh, the next uh, 4,000 years. Yeah, I, I don't Dante get Dante discusses that. I don't get the I'm end advantage to this uh, over just doing like a Zoom call or a conference call with somebody sharing a screen. Mm. that's I, my issue it would just that. be awesome like your avatar is xena the princess warrior and you're on the moon and everyone's just something really cool and interesting that would be cool but what about how much control over your avatar like can you reach across and slap another avatar can you tip the table Challenge over them to, to, like sword fights and stuff yeah. like that maybe you allow breaks and in the breaks between the meetings you allow combat or you whatever have, you want or you get to do like the plank so. thing. Or you get to do what, Tyson? The plank thing where you walk out uh, on the building and then look down and there's you're walking on oh. a wooden plank across buildings. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> you're no your turn. I feel yeah. like I'm gonna yeah. fall. And everyone in real in reality is like, oh, he's such an idiot. Yeah, he <laughs> looks like he's scared. Well, he's so scared. He's tricked. He's been tricked. Would this one be better or worse if we were all in virtual reality, like, and people were just watching, like, <laughs> the of, like that we would be like hanging out in like some studio? I would love to try that once. Mm -hmm. I think that'd be hilarious. Okay, we're all so sitting in our virtual conference room. You think we should do that? That as one of the podcasts? Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. How much does this service cost? Eighty-five trillion dollars, <laughs> probably. You, okay. We need goggles. We need to all wear the headset. Yeah. No, I don't have a headset. Is Oculus, is that owned by Facebook now? I Is it? I think it might be. I think it might be too. 
to look that up. Okay. Uh, anyway, but, sorry, that was my tangent. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um. So let's see. Maybe somebody could let us know if they've uh, done any of these to uh, do the virtual reality Facebook meetings. Okay. All right. Then, Danny, are you ready to take us to that special place known as Danny's Bolt Hole? Yes, take us there with the song. Yeah. I think you're gonna feel you be Yes. It's interesting that we talk so much about robots today mm -hmm. uh, because that was what my bolt hole was. An, another robot story, which we expect for these wave of robots to just swarm us at any moment. But the robot future is very slow in coming, right? And we watch the robots doing parkour and we know why, because it's freaking hard to build a cool robot that is human, mm -hmm. looks very human and acts very human. But there are some tasks that are slowly being pawned off to robots. And it's not as cool as you think. Remember the robot priest and some of those other stories we've talked about? It's never as cool as you'd think. But when you consider some tasks, like maybe working at the DMV, some tasks, even the humans seem robotic when they do a human task. So those are the ones that seem most prone to a good robot or would, would work well with the, the robots. And one of those areas is the the legal areas oh okay <clears throat> be boring and the bbc had an article about would you allow a robot to represent you and uh it talks about a handful of people that are working on making that possible but what what they're really describing is a robot that fills out forms and responds for you in legalese which i thought is the perfect place for a robot right a legal robot a lawyer robot that's the perfect place where I think we should all have robots because it seems to me like, like a, le a a law robot would be far more honest in representing you or in fighting you than yep. a human because yep. lawyers have terrible reputations. And I'd like to think that the, we would have upstanding legal robots if those were to grab. Well, and you could, you could jam them full of all the knowledge they need for just law and they know how to combat whatever the opposition is saying with what they're saying. And it's a perfect, potentially if you, the robots are programmed and you have a robot judge as well and a robot jury, no emotion, you get, you get a perfect outcome every time. And, and Tyson, actually you hit upon something that was in the article and it talked about using um, AIs for assistance and it talks about um, sorting through documents. This mm -hmm. the, one of the stories they tell is they had to sort through ten thousand documents. They had an AI do it. It did it in a matter of hours, maybe a day, and it would have taken humans weeks and cost fifty thousand dollars. Yeah. And so there's so many stupid tasks. Which, by the way, the fact that you need a robot to sort through ten thousand documents shows how stupid the legal system really is. That it's so convoluted and complex. And it's just a giant bloated oh, mess. Best. The lawyers, Danny. That's like, why they've created a, an environment where you need one of them yeah. to go th to sort through it. And the <laughs> idea, of, I love the idea of a robot because it gets rid of all these people who are, are intentionally making it complicated so that you require their services to sort through the big mess that they've built. So yeah. I'm not keen on uh, a robot judge or jury yet. No, what this <laughs> How, hear me out. Hear me out. Okay, mm -hmm. let's take that Facebook technology. Let's get a, a virtual reality jury. Oh, so and the jury's at home wearing a headset? Yeah. Yeah, I don't mind that. Yeah. But then, and yeah, the problem there is that uh, as a jury member in the flesh, I feel like you'd probably feel more accountable. Yeah. No, no Tyson. He well, I think it's a great idea to listen to this because you can do your juringing, if that is a word, from the yeah. comfort of your home. You're more no. likely to be. Jurors, I think. Yeah, I think you'd be a little bit more lenient. Whereas if you're sitting all stuffed up in that courtroom with those terrible chairs. Are you supposed to be lenient, though? That's the thing. Well, I think that maybe sometimes you give that person who's dragged this trial out for three weeks. Yeah, yeah. You're going to be like, dude, you screwed me for three weeks. I missed my boat, my fishing trip. 
I was going to go on. I'm going to stick paid it to $18 you. a day. Yeah. I had to eat uh, Jack in the box every single day. Yeah. I am going to make your life miserable. I don't care. I, if you're, I don't care at this point if you're guilty or not. Yeah. I think, uh, I mean, sure there, that there's that, but I also feel like if I'm dialing in from my home with, uh, VR, I'm definitely got that thing on mute walking around playing oh, yeah. with my daughters drinking sodas from the fridge watching tv scarfing hot dogs scarfing hot dogs to try and get out of this thing <laughs> and uh the headset on so what you got to do is you have to have a full t- team of police officers at your house uh making sure that you Why are a police officer just have an ai monitor have a robot yeah so have a uh, so the court system sends over a monitoring robot that makes sure that you're a robot. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sure that stares at you. Your headset is on full volume and that you're just sitting there. The Tesla bot. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect job. Fine. By the way, this is more about a a lawyer who's a robot and I'm all for that because it seems like lawyers just do a bunch of work in the background and charge you an insane amount. And now you just got this AI plugging away and he's going to do probably a better job because he can handle 10,000 clients at once. And, uh, I like this. Mm-hmm. I like okay. this a lot. Okay. Yeah. Danny, I like it too. No, just, uh, you know, we're, we're going to talk about the impending world of robots until that, uh, world is here. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, well, done. Adam Katz, uh, talks about the stenographers and why are they still there? And my only answer, even 15, 20, 30 years ago was they have a good tradition. Team. Oh, they have a good union <laughs> and <also more>. <laughs> tradition. <laughs> like it's what it's probably the only job that still asks uh, how fast you can type. What's your words per minute? Mm-hmm. That's like yeah, WPMs. yeah, WPMs. Mm-hmm. Well, so, and plus, probably uh, it's pretty cool as a lawyer. Could I have the court read back to me what was just said? Like that's, that's kind of cool. You yeah. said, then I took the hot dog and. <laughs> <laughs> but immediately ate 14 peanut butter and jellies after that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, Danny, what do you have coming up this week? Oh, I got an episode coming out on Thursday morning. Milk crate challenge? Uh, no. If I find some milk crates, that to me is the biggest challenge is finding enough milk crates to do the challenge. Where do you I've get already, milk crates? I've already got them shipped to your house. Amazon sure Prime them. had them. Yeah. I don't know if I'd be willing to try a stack of They're six on their or way. seven, They're on but their I, way. I, I'd, I'd try four, maybe five over some I, pads. Okay. I got you enough to do a five stack pyramid, five top pyramid. Okay. Well, if that's the case, expect to uh, both see me on TikTok doing the challenge and then later visit me in the hospital. Is this true? If I send you milk crates, you will do the, the challenge. I will do the challenge if you send me the milk crates. I will not stack I, it six or seven. How that many? seven's insane. But five I would, I eight. would try five. Five? And, oh my god! I, I don't want that on my conscience. <laughs> oh, am I liable? <laughs> well, my robot lawyer will decide that. Alan Barack Obama. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Depeat in the hats asking uh, where. Uh, where he can get a mediocre amateur hat that you oh, got on top of your I head. I think I sell them online. I keep meaning to make them better, but like everything I do with mediocre amateur, I have mm-hmm. good intentions and poor exactly. execution. Yeah. So yeah. it's tough. Well, what what Rob does and Tyson does is actually tough. People probably think you guys just sit around, do nothing and do your dream job, but it actually takes a ton of work. Yeah. Sure does. <clears throat> Until the robot can be invented that gets rid of all that boring stuff. I mostly, honestly, if I had an intern, all you interns that are listening, if I had an intern that was in Arizona that could just do some filming for me with my camera while I'm playing pickleball, that would be fantastic. Yeah. And, and, so, you would, and you would tell them survivor stories. and regale. I'd tell them survivor stories. Regale and, them. They have to be good with uh, the good enough with the camera. And by the way, Tesla robot sure. job right there. All of a sudden, no need for interns because that's basically what a Tesla bot is for. Like do Tesla bot, that, film me. Do you think the Tesla bot could get out of uh, out of my way as I'm charging the net to play pickleball? 
Uh, would you it, trust an intern to be in your way? I need this what? intern to be in my face with the camera, dude, moving around me as I'm playing. Huh? Yeah. Oh wait, this this week in Gilbert, right? Yeah, this week in Gilbert on Monday. Oh, and your drone shot was great. Uh, actually, the I thought the lighting would be an issue, but it actually handled the darkness pretty well. Yeah, I mean, that's what drones do. Well done. No, not all handle drones. the dark. They handle the darkness in our souls. <laughs> What are you having the drone do? <laughs> <laughs> well, we've do already it again, drone. I don't already, want to. <laughs> we've already droned on too long about this. I can tell by Rob's face that he needs to get back to whatever else. No, we're he's doing our on. we're doing our sign off. So I was trying to move it to your competition in Gilbert. I know we are. I'm going to be in Gilbert on Monday. It's not a competition. It's a meet and oh. greet, and it's informal. I'm just showing up to a public place to play pickleball. Dude. You'll be way overdressed for this one. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, will you be serving hot dogs? No, because I that's a liability now. Yeah. Oh, that's a good point. You go yeah. to a party, they're serving hot dogs, but you, you'll be hearing from my lawyer. My robot lawyer. My robot lawyer. Yeah. Yeah. You have to sign a release well, if you want a hot dog. Yeah, you do. Uh, yeah. Danny, what do you got going on? I already said we're on to Rob. I, I'm oh. putting a video out on mediocre. Yeah, but do you have YouTube. any adventures? Are you going anywhere planned? I mean, you, you know, I always say I don't. This is the same conversation, and then 24 hours from now, I might. You're going so, somewhere, okay? I'm probably always uh, going somewhere. Rob, what do you have going on? You're in the great state of New York. Your yeah, home New York state, good, but still on the road podcasting. Be talking about the fourth best season of Survivor of all time: fans versus favorites. This is crazy. How many you've gone through? so close i've been and, and it's weird because i've heard you say you know you've been doing a countdown mm -hmm. every episode mm -hmm. so it's been Weeks so many episodes months. it's insane yeah. it's a lot i mean it's something 40 seasons of 13 episodes each are you even watching the full finale like the live the reunion fin sure wow. that's crazy mm -hmm. that's yep. what you should said your tesla bot to do <laughs> watch all the seasons sure. give you cliff notes yes that would be great. Yeah. But he's watching them on three speed. No, Fast and Furious I watch on three three X. I'm not watching oh. Survivor on three X. You what do you watch Survivor on? I watch on like 1.4. Awesome. Do yeah. I sound funny in 1.4 or I still I sound like okay? Sometimes I'm like, oh, do I have it on one? Did I did I speed it up? It's like, oh yeah, I'm on 1.5. Yeah, now you're used to it. Used to it. Your yeah. brain has adjusted. That's crazy. Uh, the human brain is <laughs> still a miracle. It has like a batting donut on, and it's like, all right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now it feels light. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, got that going on, and uh, plenty of Big Brother. So it's all happening. It really is, man. That's great. And uh, we didn't get to do our Big Brother updates this time, but we'll probably get them next week at whatever time we decide to go on. Yeah. And check out Tyson's TikTok where he's breaking Survivor 41 news left and right. Dude, it's crazy. I can't believe I'm the first one to those get first two people. You, you. I was shocked by your first two big yeah. reveals. Didn't, Which one of the two do you it. think is going to go further in the game? Uh, I think Vegetable Man. Hey, uh, probably. <laughs> no spoil. This is a spoiler-free place here. <laughs> <laughs> Veggie Man will live forever. I think Veggie yeah. Man. <laughs> if he's he eats eternal. his PB and J's, yeah. <laughs> Plus, he will be affected by you know food deprivation. He can kind of just <laughs> snack on his appendages. That's yeah. true. Either in the heat. Yeah, I like it. Right. So, uh, cool. Okay, well, it sounds like it's all happening for all of us. And uh, I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Rob? Thank you all so much. See you next time. We did it, guys.